Yeah, you have like this, like in Ascalon, you've got like this blasted landscape that's just starting to come back and it kind of gets really beautiful and there's trees up north. And then you go into the Shiver Peaks, you've got the snow, the mountains, all of that. And we've done a lot of work. We've been super proud of how we, how we did that. And we wanted to continue that in Heart of Thorns once we went into the Heart of Maguma. But we had this vertical space to work in. Yeah. And we've got these different biomes. Yeah, so we actually started with looking at how, uh, how we horizontally kind of blocked out the space and kind of figured out uh, the play areas and things like that. And we actually just kind of swapped it sideways. Now we're doing it on more vertical space. <laughs> so it's taking a look at, okay, when you go to the jungle, you have various different uh, types, of, even just like natural rainforest in terms of the treetops to the, the ground cover to what even goes below and so we started playing a lot more with that vertical space mm -hmm. and we just started with the same design process of okay these are the types of stories that we want to tell here's where our natural hubs are going to be here's the general flow we want for players as they're going through the maps and just had more of that uh, that verticality space to play with and then you start adding in gliding uh, and the mastery system, and it just becomes, it starts opening up even more modes of transportation, uh, yeah. even with like the mush, jump mushrooms and stuff like that. So we started just doing all kinds of crazy things in terms of how you get from one corner of the map to the other, and now you have a three dimensional space that you're playing with it even more. There's so much more to work with. I think when it really started hitting home for me was when I went into the Itzel Tree Village, the Itzel Hub, and you have like these rope bridges and there are all these places where I'm, I'm not just going back and forth, but there's also, okay, I can look up and see there's something going on up there, but I need to go back and up and back around again. And it was just, it was not just side to side, but there was so much more going on than it looked like yeah. at first. I think for me, I play a lot of the, the content in the, especially in the Verdant Brink map. Yeah. I find myself oftentimes like getting either knocked back by an enemy and then falling being like, oh, this is not going to end up. And this is not caught, okay. Being caught by a net or something. Yeah. So there's a lot, of, a lot of the times like you'll discover things even by accident, either by falling off or by getting knocked off or even by jumping. And I know a lot of, a lot of folks like jumping off of things. And so uh, the gliders has really, really brought and, and opened up that, those areas for us in a way that I don't think we were, uh, we were super uh, We were just didn't anticipate until yeah. we actually got yeah. in there and started playing with it. Like we had a general idea, but until you like prototype it out and you kind of see how it's going to react you don't know for sure or what's going to happen and especially like the craziness that you designers like <laughs> have when you're like building out all those individual yeah. pieces of content like and by that he means thank you yes. oh yes thank you for being crazy <laughs> of course you know i think as we talk it's easier if we show while we tell so we do have a couple of videos just that really show off well the depth and width of the map mm -hmm. so we can look at those while we're talking um but you have I'm just going to pick on you now. That's fine. Because we talked so much about adventures yesterday. Yeah. And again, the jumping mushrooms and gliding is making a huge difference in that. How did you how did you get all of that in there? How did you start working? Was it weird getting into that vertical space? You know, I think, um, I mean, I, I worked on the Silver Waste jumping puzzle uh, before this, and so I, it sort of came a little bit more naturally thinking about that space. I was really prepared for it. Wait, that was you? Well, it was me and Josh, yeah. Oh uh, I gosh. did a lot of the content design, and he did all the all, all the is, Josh part. has taken all the heat. He is, that he some is. Of yours. You can blame, okay. you can blame Josh for that one. Um, but I think when, when, when we when I started transitioning onto the uh, expansion team, um, it really became one of those things like, oh man, the, the maps are sort of, we've got a lot of that, we already have the gliding stuff uh, locked down, we have a lot of that space already starting to develop, so it was really fun for me to go to these different map artists and say, give me a space to play with, what do you think is cool about, what do you want to show me? We've got a cool gliding um, adventure that goes through a, an Itzel village that's sort of suspended along the sides of a cliff, and all these places were places that were sort of like, hey, can we make use of this? It's really awesome to be able to fly through and, and see all these things, and actually there's sort of a funny story with, uh, with one of the adventures the floor is lava, actually. Uh -huh. It actually started out in Verdant Brink. And uh, we discovered that we, really? we actually had it in a cave and the ceilings were too low. So some of the feedback we got was, when we do those jumps, we want to, we wanna, I really want to be able to like have my camera far out. I don't want to hit the ceiling. I don't want to feel like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like sort of claustrophobic about it. Right. But we were in a cave. And uh, and so when we tried to raise the ceiling, we realized there was content up there. And we were like, you know, oh, no. it doesn't really make a lot of sense <laughs> to try to carve out this space. Why don't we actually find a space that's really good for this, for mm -hmm. this content and actually move deeper into the jungle? And so it's had a lot of homes in, uh, in its incarnations. Oh Oh my gosh, so I have to know, do you remember what you ran into when you raised um, that up? Uh, I, oh man, I want to say, so it's it's in, it was in an area with a lot of Itzel, and I think they had a village above, we didn't want to displace them. Yeah. Like, they've been through a lot. With, it's it's, it's been difficult. With, yeah, with Mordremoth and, and all of that stuff, we just, we felt like maybe they should have some peace and quiet. Yeah, it's, 
it's fair. Yeah. Going back to kind of the, the approach to how we've been looking at from an artistic standpoint and things like that, like blending that content in to just the environments that have been created. And you go back to like one of the initial trailers and you hear Daniel talking about how we wanted to have the, kind of this artisanal craftsmanship of having character and personality with just the, the level of environment. And we, we still have that today. And so it's being able to take those and tell interesting stories on top of that. But again, going back to gliding and with masteries and things like that, we can actually look at, okay, let's try and traverse this in ways that we've never been able to do before. How do we make it so you can actually yeah. you know, use mushrooms to get up the sides of these cliffs or use gliding to get to locations on the far side of a chasm that before was never something we even considered? And then you start layering on updrafts, you know, ley line gliding, that kind of stuff. And now we just start having even more uh, ways that we can just diversely create this content for, for players to enjoy. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned ley line gliding. Can you kind of give a little description? That's one of the things that we haven't shown publicly. Uh, the short version is there's ley line energy that is all throughout the Maguma jungle, and it's it's you know connecting various locations, whether it's you know floating platforms, whether it's getting you across giant uh, you know caverns and things like yeah. that. Um, but your normal gliding is just not good enough to be able to, to make the, the, the jump and use that kind of uh, loose energy. And so that's one of those that as you're leveling up your tiers, um, you know, soon you'll be able to use updrafts and use those to kind of get up into higher locations. Uh, and then towards the end of, the, of the, that track is when you're going to be actually able to use those ley lines and get to locations, you know, bumping you across, laying you almost like uh, water skipping uh, really quickly across uh, nice. uh, these ley line energies to get to other locations. Yeah. Um, you know what? We have a second gliding video that we can take a look at while we we delve into gliding a little bit because that's such a big part of how these maps work. Yeah. And I made the, I actually, this was my character, and I'm kind of flying around just seeing what I can see. Oh man, yeah. I think, let's see. Is yeah, this? okay, so yeah, there's updraft. This was in Verdant Brink. Yep, yep. But you've got the updrafts that one of the biggest things I noticed was learning to navigate those mm -hmm. because I did get into a couple of tricky situations. Yeah. Where I, I was like, I have nowhere, I'm losing altitude, I have nowhere to go. But something that I didn't realize we put in there was that you can, you have these updrafts at different heights. Yep. And a part of the skill of gliding is learning to navigate those and learning, okay, if I go up here and then I glide a little bit more, then I can get all the way up here. Because there are things at every level, yeah. literally down farther than you can see. Mm -hmm. To some extent, we look at this as kind of like, you know, the jumping puzzles. You're always trying to get up to some crazy uh -huh. location, right? Now, well, now with updrafts, it gives you an even more tools uh, for us to kind of play with and figure out, okay, how do you get from one location to the other? Mm -hmm. We saw this a little bit in yesterday when we were talking about the adventures and showing how you use the jump mushrooms and the, the masks area to kind to get to various locations and you know they don't always send you to the same height some of them will go up a little bit higher some will go a little, a little bit lower and you can see right now that you know this just gives us the environment artists more t uh, you know tools for us to play with and trying to figure out how you actually traverse these maps plus at the same time we can do new styles of content with this that we could never could have done before yeah I think it also gives us an opportunity in a lot of cases to show off um, you get a lot of different angles we you know we, we had the first person camera coming in a, a while back oh, and yeah. now we have another opportunity for these cinematic moments where you're where you're where you're no longer sort of like looking up at the mountain but now you're looking down at it or you're, you're you know you're flying alongside it really quick or gliding around alongside it really closely and I think that provides a different a, a very unique and different experience that we haven't experienced before yeah there have been it's afforded so many opportunities I know if you're keeping up with the story you know that the packed airships have just been smashed to bits and I am so sad I didn't get this this was after we were recording I was just still kind of learning just looking around and seeing what I could see. And I saw one of the packed airships in the distance. You got a little look at it earlier. And I'm gliding around and I got to thinking, I wonder, so kind of headed over that way and found out that I can land on that packed airship yeah. and run around on top of it and just look at the wreckage I got inside. And I was, it was so cool and it was so unexpected that I was a little worried and I instant messaged Aaron, one of our map artists, <laughs> and I was like, hey, Aaron, um, so I'm inside this packed airship. I mean, I'm like literally running around inside the wreckage. Is this right? 
Yeah. Am I supposed to be able to do that? And I could like just about see how smug he was from across the building. <laughs> he was like, yep, yep. that is that correct, ma'am. Have fun. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like uh, going back to the whole idea of the verticality of these maps, I think, uh, in, you know, from a lore perspective and from a, uh, sort of a story standpoint, you also have this very interesting tension. Like, you know, when with that with that packed video at the end of the at the end of season yeah. two, where you know we we attack the jungle, we're trying to fight off Mordremoth. I think that the the way that we've introduced and we sort of the way we traverse through these maps is definitely a feeling like a, of coming in from above and really entering Mordremoth Slayer, mm -hmm. right? Like you know the, yeah. the 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 plants coming up from the ground, and you're sort of coming in to meet meet them. Um, sort of reminded me of when I, you know, of the story of the Titans, where you know it was the gods versus the Titans, and if you could pull them out, you know, off of their earthly uh -huh. foothold, you could defeat them. And I feel we we sort of get a, a similar feeling where we're sort of we're fighting Mordremoth, we're coming in from above, and we really have the power behind us in that regard. In that yeah. Regard. That, by the way, is that airship that I went back and <laughs> checked out later. Yeah, I yeah, am yeah. just that really drove it home for me. The fact that we watched last year in that cinematic that these vines came up, literally ripped the things out of the air, and they're still way up there. They're just kind of hanging out, and yeah. we now have access yeah. because of what we've done. Yeah, we're sort of we're falling right into yeah. the heart of it. And this allows us to hide even more things for players to explore. <laughs> I mean, we, we've talked previously about, like, hey, look, we have fans who have thousands of hours in the game and they're now still discovering little you know secrets that we've yeah, put in yeah. since launch this just gives us even more places and you know combining all the the ways that you can tra now traverse through the jungle yeah. mm -hmm. so i think you're going to be able to see this in a minute just off to the right hand side as i was gliding through i just the explorers in the game, those of you who like to look around and find all of the little hidden things, you have so much to do. Yeah, you can see it off to the right here. That is a jumping puzzle on the side of a cliff oh, yeah. that you can only get to by gliding. So I headed over later, and again, I didn't capture all of this amazing stuff until after we were done and I was still exploring. Um, you finish this jumping puzzle, you go up and around, and I found a little cave and went through this tunnel and found some content that... I would not have seen it. And I'm not going to give it away because I don't want to ruin it and everybody would completely freak yeah. out. Well, 27 days. 27 days. You guys look for that look for that jumping puzzle <laughs> and do it and go through the little tunnel at the end. Yeah. There's more than one, though. I mean, we have those hidden all over the oh, map. I'm going to say two words. Burrowing chickens. Mm -hmm. This is new. Mm -hmm. I haven't I, found that's this. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. <laughs> oh, you guys, doesn't he need to tell me where... Can nope. you can you like once we're back at work? Can you like at least point and guide me? That, I don't want to spoil it. You he gave you two words. Yeah, I gave you the two words I can give you. Burrowing chickens. But it just sounds like a thing you made up. It's like, hey, what are the weirdest words I can put together? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. I'm gonna have to take a look and try to find this. <laughs> yeah, and that's this is exactly it's killing me now. But there is content just hidden everywhere, and the only way you can get to it is by gliding. You will also notice there are some little hovering, they almost look like hot air balloons as far as their silhouette. Have you guys seen these? Oh, yeah. Did you do them? I, did, I didn't uh, uh, personally do mm -hmm. them, but uh, it's sort of uh, part of the things that we, you know, we, we learned a lot from Dry Top. We learned a lot from Silver Waste. It's about um, how to sort of cohesively build a map so that the, the, you know, the way the players participate, it feels very uh, push-pull, feels very um, engaging. And so that is actually is a, is a big part of it. Those, those silhouettes that you're seeing is a, is a part of, our, uh, mm -hmm. of the, the story of Verdant Brink. Yeah, so I was flying past these, and I, I kept seeing them, and you know, then something else would catch my eye, and I would get distracted. This is like Colin talked about earlier. You go in with a goal, but yep. then there's so much else going on that you wind up doing 10 other things. And I finally, about the fourth or fifth time, I finally passed one and thought, I'm going to go over there and see what's, what's going on. There are just these little things hovering in the air. And I got up to it, and you know, you had the interact option. I hit F to interact, and it said, you require a key to open this chest. And I was like, oh! This is a loot chest. This is a loot chest. They're just hovering everywhere in midair. And it's like pieces of packed wreckage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just hanging out there. Uh, you can look at it as kind of a similar to what we did in the, the Silver Waste with like the buried chests and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it, It's more content evolution from what we learned from the lessons from Living World and what we brought into the jungle. Um, you see that even in terms of like the kind of map-wide events that we started uh, with the Silver Waste where everyone was building up the pack readiness so you could actually go into the, the uh, caverns down below to beat the bosses and then go in and fight like the vine tendrils and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, we have that in, in now in these, these each of these four maps as well, where there is some uh, kind of unique 
uh, meta or you know overall objective that the entire map yeah. is, is playing together and trying to accomplish. Um, we had kind of the day-night cycle that you've seen in Virgin Brink, but each of the other three maps has their own one mechanic, and some of them are leading up to some giant bosses that we haven't really talked about yet, um, and some, unfortunately, that we won't be talking about until you get a chance to see them in live. But we are bringing back some of like, or not bringing back, but we've made some brand new world bosses that you'll see in the in the same veins that you saw like uh, Tequadal or like the the evolved jungle worm that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're actually bringing in some new uh, encounters and new huge bosses for players to come and overcome. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to look back and see, like in Dry Top and Silver Waste. I wanted to say in Dry Top and Vernon Brink, but we're not technically there yet. Um, the ways that we started using that verticality, like with the crystals in Dry Top, mm -hmm. just to see the progression and how we started making this work and how we started exploring yeah. that vertical space. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think a lot, a lot should be said about the the work and the and the evolution of what our, our environment artists have done. I, I you know, jo Josh did really amazing work on on Dry Top and Silver Waste, and I think uh, now that we had, you know, we have these, these other maps coming in, uh, they the, the folks that were watching that really took that to heart and really just made some incredible stuff. I, I really got to give a shout out to those to those guys. Oh yeah, no, we couldn't do our jobs without them. Like, uh, yeah. and they're always pushing us too. Like it's, it goes both ways. Like we try and build some crazy new content that no one, you know, like nobody foresee coming. Yeah. And then they'll try and one-up us and be like, hey, well, now we've <laughs> got this new tech and we're going to do this thing, and now you have to populate it with your content. And so, you know, it's it's this nice little, not rivalry, but it's like we feed off each other in terms of yeah. trying to see how more, how much more we can put in, how much more, um, you know, creativity and, in some cases, insanity we can put into the maps for the players to enjoy. It's good insanity. It's very, very fun insanity. We talked yesterday, I think, about how there's so much going on in the game that you just need to constantly be looking and pay attention to your surroundings. You're not just saying, okay, here's, there's a heart on this part of the map. I'm going to aim straight for it. But you need to keep an eye out. And with these maps, there's so much more. I mean, you're needing to look up, down, left, right, everywhere, because there's going to be something going on. It's the same, it's the same process, but just exponentially bigger. I mean, you talk about the, the like, we had the renowned regions uh, in, in Corteria, and now yeah. as we move into the jungle, like, we actually took that as an evolution in terms of the style of content, where you actually have these hubs that are opening up um, the more events, the more you help out these individual, uh, you know, groups of, of NPCs who are either trapped or who are helping explore or helping uh, uh, aid you in the fight against Mordremoth and his forces. Um, you know, you see we're evolving those outposts and then opening things like adventures, jumping puzzles, access to new content, and then opening up even more content content on top of that like we wanted to create each one of these locations as here's kind of a central battleground you know point here's where you know you can find those things think of it like a base renowned region and then layering more and more uh, content on top of it so you can actually build out the environment and build up the story associated with it as well yeah oh you mentioned something uh, just just now about how um you know, you, you get into these maps and you start seeing all these things that are going on. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually, I, I've run into a couple of times where, like, I played these, ba these past beta weekends. And yeah. I'm, I'm all over the place with my content. My content's in all these uh, all these different maps. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the time I spend just sort of, like, teleporting around, like, because I get to be a little GD dev, right? Yeah. And so I got into the beta weekend, and I was, and I was, I was playing with one of the designers um, who actually did a lot of the work on Verdant Brink. And uh, thank thank goodness that she was there because <laughs> I, I needed, like, a, a chaperone. I was falling off a cliff, so I didn't know how to get to, you know, Know, from one point A to point B, and like I, I stopped and I thought about it for a second. I was like, "Oh man, I love this feeling. It's all new to me, and it's all fun. Isn't it great? It's super great. It's, it's kind of funny, right? Like when you when we first started playing Guild Wars 2, okay, we have we now have the concept of dodge rolling. You now have something that's new and, and right. you know casting uh, abilities on the move and things like that. And you just get so used to it that you go play you know other styles of games. It's like you can't do that. Well, then we started going into the jungle, and we started doing gliding, and then we went back to Quarteria, like, online before the, the expansion's ready, and we don't have that. Oh, no. And so intrinsically, we're like, okay, deploy glider, wait, and we're created. Oh, oh yeah. no, yeah. and we're dead. the falling damage trait doesn't even help. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. like, it's it's nice to have that kind of, um, that newness in terms of, uh, of exploration and understanding of, uh, you know, where we're going with not just the pacing of, of the game, but also the content, the story, and everything else. Like, mm -hmm. there is an element of this that is going to feel very new the first time you step into the jungle in some ways that you felt when you first walked into the, the world of Tyria uh, for Guild Wars 2. Absolutely. Well, did you see, I don't know if you guys watched the Guild Hall's live stream I did with Link a while back. Mm -hmm. It was the first time, and we're making use of that space in Guild Halls too. I mean, the Guild Halls are just, I was gliding all over the place, but that first time I hadn't really had a lot of experience with gliders. 
to this day, I maintain something bugged, but I was like, okay, and, you know, Link like glided down, he was gonna show me something else, and this is all live. So I jump off the edge, and my glider deployed, and then I hit space. I have no idea how it deployed on its own, but then I was just... Yep, you, you cratered. Yeah, there's, I was an enormous crater, and there is a certain learning curve there, even though that was not my fault. It was, was definitely it was, not me. No, it was totally not your fault. No, yes. I'm pretty sure Link just reached over while I wasn't looking. Mm. Fix that. So this just, just going back into that, this vertical space gives us so much more content to play with. And you can't say burrowing chickens, but you can. I want to know what your what the best part is for you. What are you most looking forward to once oh, Heart of Thorns is live? Man, uh... I want to talk about maths we haven't talked about, and I can't. I don't. No. Nope. Can't. I got to okay. hold back. So Verdant Brink. Uh, so if it was up to me, you could. But sure. There is a. Just FYI, there, I, I believe I one know. of our designers, uh, uh, Lisa, actually put in or, or got an animation for the Itzel of him uh, like whittling a sharp stick, and it's so like an, it's not like an idle animation. We very consciously chose to put him in a place where you got to find him. And he's like, he's just sort of this, this calm, you know, they, they have their everyday, they do their things. They play their little, they play their little lutes and they, they, oh, I saw that guy. Exactly. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of actually like subtle things that we've placed in a lot of places. Like I said, those hidden things that are just you know, the unique flavors of like what everyday life is with the Itzel. And I think that they're, th those are my favorite things that I'm looking forward to in yeah. Burden Brink. All right. You play a lot like I do all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm you have to pick one. <laughs> it's, I know it's awful. No, it, it's ultimately coming down to I'm looking forward to the, the challenging content that now that we can do even more with, like um, we can play a lot more with movement. Um, and so like one of the bosses that we're, you know, we're putting out there for the uh, on those epic scales, it forces you to move around a lot more and forces you to think about like how do you uh, traverse locations and the fastest way to get from point A to point B to avoid either massive attacks, to do damage to these creatures or things like that. So that yeah, that becomes more fun for me because like, it's again like I was saying, like you learn to dodge roll, you learn to glide, you learn you know, yeah. what's next, and being able to use these these masteries and um, you know make more meaningful choices to your character and the evolution of your character, uh, I think is going to be really exciting. Not just for me, but I'm going to love watching how the players overcome this. Yeah. You know, what order are they going to choose uh, to uh, unlock their masteries? Uh, I saw some people uh, posting that based on the conversation we had uh, yesterday, uh -huh. that, like I was totally recommending gliding is the mask, the one you need to do first. But it doesn't have to be that way, right? Like, like there's all these other ones that are really good and are going to unlock more styles of content that, um, you know, you can unlock content for people around you. It's not just about, like, um, everything about the individual. It's about how we as a, as a community are going to go through these, uh, all these maps and unlock all this content mm -hmm. um, and ultimately take the fight to Mordermoth. Yeah. Well, the awesome thing about Masters is, is that you don't have a time limit. You can yeah. unlock them all and you have lots of game to play. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, you guys, keep your eyes open. Find Somebody find me those burrowing chickens. Seriously. You know, I'm going to drive you up the wall about that, right? Until I find out where they are oh, and what this goodness. is about. Keep your eyes peeled in all directions and just enjoy gliding. Something else, one more thing that I was going to mention. We had talked about, I think it's Gorsaval that, like, rears up this big attack and everybody has to glide or you're just dead, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have, we have put these things everywhere, so keep your eyes open and enjoy all of the parts of the maps of Heart of Thorns. We'll see you guys later.